out of here. Well, uh, figured I'd, uh, jump in and do my very first top 10 list of 20, or top 10 list, which is, uh, my top 10 personal tobaccos of 2017. You know, smoking a little, uh, Peter Stokelby luxury navy flake in my Metalier cob. I just got, I just got to, uh, tonight from Mod Piper, Mark. And this thing is amazing. It smokes Virginia's like a freaking dream, I tell you what. Anyway, I suppose we should get right into it. Drinking some uh, mulled wine and my Legend of Zelda cup. Oh, yeah. Anyway. If y'all haven't checked out Mod Piper, go hit him up. Give him a sub. Uh, if you like anything like this, he he makes these. Um, I have uh, the one I showed on my other videos where it is just the the Cavalier but with a cob instead of this metal tubing. And I have another that he modded for me. And he he does great work. So hit him up. I mean, very reasonable with his prices and all that. And just he's also just a good guy. But... <sighs> all right, now set this down. Let's get into it. <laughs> Oops. Stay. All right, let's get rolling. My number ten. Some of these I'll have the tins for, or jars. Some I don't because either they were samples or I'm out or. I'm just lazy. One and three. Anyway, number ten. Uh, Cornell and Deals. On a bookshop. When I first tried on a bookshop, uh, really early this year, it's, uh, it didn't really strike my fancy, honestly. It seemed harsh. It seemed like a lot of, some people say, cigarette -y, I guess. The more I've smoked it, because uh, I only got an ounce when I first got it. The more I smoked it, the more I just... I really love that blend. It's... You can still taste the Virginias, but... You can still taste the Perique. But the star of the show with Haunted Bookshop is... First and foremost, the Burley. And I've really gotten into Burley blends. Um, so, yeah. It's pretty freaking tasty. If you haven't gotten yourself some, get it. Alright. Number nine. GLP's Quiet Nights. Now, I don't have uh, any of this left. I, I only got a small sample of it from uh, Standard Texan. But I tell you what, that stuff is awesome. Uh, very smoky and smooth and just rich and creamy. Uh, definitely, definitely on my, to, uh, my uh, list of things to get more of. So... That'd be GOP's Quiet Nights. Number eight. And uh, this one really grew on me. And that's uh, Seattle Pipe Club's Plum Pudding. Um, that that could go either way. I mean, this, this top ten list is kind of in order. As much as I could make it in order. Uh, some could be rearranged with others. Just, I mean just on my list. I mean, you can see I've already swapped a few, few around just by arrows and crossing stuff out. and So a lot of it could go either way. Um, but anyway, plum pudding. Uh, once again, when I originally tried it, I did not like it. I was not into English blends for a while. Like anything like Kia, really. And uh, I really... Uh, the thing that sucks is like when I only have about two, three bowls of it left from after giving out samples and everything. That's when I really started liking it, so I'm definitely gonna have to get more of that as well. So uh that's Sierra Clyde Club plum, plum pudding. Number seven. That will be Frog Morton, the original, Frog on the Log. This is unopened. I need to open it. But I uh, I I tried this not that just less than a month ago. Uh, I got a sample of it from Ben the Bagpiper, and only about, I don't know, two, three bowls worth, and dear God, was it good. It's just, you get this 
you, you know, it's just, it's I mean, it's Frog Morton. Every, everyone knows Frog Morton, and it's smoky and rich, and yet it's very sweet. Not not extremely sweet. Just it definitely has a decent touch of sweetness to it. Um, and I love this stuff. I need to get more of it. All right, number six would be. I debated putting this on the list, considering you. I mean, you can get it right now, but it's technically not produced anymore. And that is McBaron's H H Mint and Syrian. Love this stuff. Um, I have this and one or two more tins, and then I have a half pound that just came in. I split a order with Ben Ben the Bag Piper, and I'm gonna be getting um another half pound to make that a full pound along with the steel tins I have because that stuff is too damn good not to have any left uh, after it's uh, gone because as we all know Syrian tobacco is no longer being or Syrian Latakia is no longer being manufactured or produced and uh, I, I can't remember where I heard it from but I guess uh, McClelland no not McClelland no, sorry, McBaron uh, is estimating their stores of that to run out in February, so get on it, buy yourself some. I've seen it in tins, specifically on smoking pipes, and also in the one-pound bags, so I would definitely suggest getting on that, because it's it's a very rich blend, but it, the smokiness is subdued in much more of a round, smoother flavor than your traditional Cyprian Latakia, and I freaking love that stuff. It is amazing. I'm very happy I'll be having a pound, or a little over a pound in my cellar after that. Obviously not enough, enough to last me, you know, my pipe smoking career, but enough to last me at least a little decent amount of time. All right, moving on. I'm almost uh, a little loopy and tired from, if you couldn't tell, so forgive me as we barrel through this. Number five would be Esoterica Stonehaven. Um, I originally first got, first tried this. Uh, I got a sample of it from uh, uh, one of my brother's buddies when I bought a pipe of him. He sent me a sample of Stonehaven along with it, and that was just. I mean, everyone, all the Esoterica Brent blends, everyone knows about them. It's just, it's rich and deep and dark and smooth, and. It, Wetter than shit. You're gonna have to try it out, but it's so delicious. It's it uh I've had it now fresh out of the tin and also with about a year, year and a half age on it. And just in a year that stuff has been amazing. Like the aging process does very well for uh that blend. So Stonehaven Esoterica, get yourself some if you can. Um Anytime, at the end of this video, if anyone who wants to sample any of these, you hit me up, I will send you some along. Um, I'm not I'm not shy about sharing my tobacco. Alright, moving on, number four. Another Esoterica blend. And so to bed. This stuff has been my go-to, um, one of my go-to, like, I guess you could call it Christmas blend, it's just... It's so sweet and rich and you definitely smell that smokiness and uh it's it's a it, it, it's it's a very uh it's not very powerful or robust blend um you definitely taste the smokiness of the lot of kia and the virginia shine through and I, I, I off the top of my head i can't remember who told me this but some, uh, has some type of slight mulled wine or spices topping or or flavoring if that's if that's true I'm not 100% sure but that's what I've heard and it's it's just a great all day English blend if you it wasn't so damn hard find, hard to find uh, but yeah I love in soda bed you definitely try yourself out some that stuff's amazing number three would be Peterson Irish Flake. It's a burly dark or burly dark dark strong Kentucky blend, and uh, I tried this pretty early on in my pipe smoking 
career, like pipe smoking this year. Uh, and it was a little daunting. It was a little daunting to first try. You know, it's so, you know, super high nicotine and strong and this and that. And it is high nicotine. So, I mean, if you are if you don't have the biggest tolerance, you know, be careful. You're on a full stomach. All the, you know, normal shit that goes along with that. But, uh, it, uh, it's delicious. It's rich. I said rich for about every other blend on this list. I'm not very good at describing blends just yet. I'm not a reviewer. I don't have the best palate, so they're all going to sound about the same. <laughs> but it's it's a very smoky, but in a, like a smoked meat kind of quality to it, if you will. Uh, it's I've tried a decent amount of Dark Fire blends now, and Irish Flake by Peterson is definitely my favorite that I've tried. Um... It's just, I almost get, like, like a, kind of a tea, like, flavor to it. Now, like, like uh, hard, hard to place, like, almost on, like, an herbal tea notes it, uh, sometimes. And I'm, I don't know why that is, like, and even though it's pretty strong, I actually enjoy that blend uh, in the morning with my cup of coffee because it just, it screams to be drank with a cup of coffee. It's delicious. All right, my number two is GLP's Gaslight. Um, if you can't tell, I love this stuff. I got the Bill Eight ounce tin of it, but uh, it's this right here is my favorite English blend. Um, it's just it, when you first open it up and smell it, it's just this. More so than the rest, just deep, dark, rich, uh, pretty much all you smell is a lot of Kia. And it's, it's a plug, and it is just the freaking best smelling, one of the best smelling tobacco I've ever smelled. Um, it's, it has this weird quality to it that I can't place my nose on because it's, it, it smells very heavy, a lot of key, but it's not a lap bomb, per se. Uh, but I can't remember it, what all is in it. I know there's obviously Virginia's, uh, a lot of key. I want to say there's Orientals in it, maybe something else. I don't know for sure. I should have done my research before I actually made this video. But it's, it's it fills the room. It's actually not that too strong of a room note. Uh, as far as English blends that I've smoked, believe it or not, but it's just, uh, has, like, as unpleasant as it may sound, like, almost like a tarry kind of crea creosote, I guess you would say, flavor, like, not flavoring, like, sense to it, it's just a very, it almost has, like, a meaty quality, but not really being meaty, like, it's, it's hard for me to explain what it is, but, um, a very deep, rich English blend that I love to smoke in the evenings, and that is, like I said, probably my favorite your favorite English blend right now. Um, it's just, I'm not, uh, the only the only downside I would say to that is pro probably also what makes it so rich and complex. Um, it's a plug, so you do have to take the time to prepare it, and a lot of times I don't like doing that, but it, I. I'm sure that's probably what lends a lot of its flavors, that compressing and marrying of those flavors. But anyway, before I get to my number one, because uh, the last, I'd say the last probably three, the Irish Flake, Gaslight, and my number one, those three are my top for sure. Um, the others could have gone in and out with each other. But before I get to my number one, I have three honorable mentions this year. Um, the first one is... Uh, this guy right here, Peterson University Flake. I love this stuff. It's uh, Burley, Virginia's, and I think that's it. I don't think there's any pre in it. And I think it's just uh, straight Virginia Burley, uh, more dominant on the Burley end of the spectrum. And there's a slight fruit topping to it. And that stuff is just, the flakes are beautiful. Uh, just like the Irish Flake, and it's 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 delicious. It's you know like the, the fruit topping complements the tobacco rather than overpowering it, I think. And it's just a great 
I wouldn't say all day, but definitely something I reach for more often than I thought I would. So, that's that, University Flake. And the next one will be Boswell's Northwoods. Um, that, you know, I, I wrestled for a while about the Northwoods. Um, that could have easily been in the top ten. There's just... The fact I tried it so later in the year, I think maybe it had something to do with it. Uh, if I had more time with it, maybe it would have been in the top ten. But either way, it's still it's great, deep, rich, and smoky. Def a little sweet bit of sweetness to it, because I believe there's black Cavendish in there. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure there is. Um, I love that stuff. I, I just ordered, I think, you know, I, don't know, I think a half pound of it. And then... The last honorable mention is uh, McClellan's Balkan Blue, and that could have very easily been in the top ten. The only thing, the only thing stopping it from being so, is the fact that I just op uh, tried it for the first time a week ago. I want to say, and I've only had two bowls of it so far, so I don't want to. I I felt like I I I, I should spend more time before I put it in the top ten. And, Maybe I might include it in next year's list, considering I tried it, you know, the very end of December. I don't know, but it's just, it's it's different. Like, when I open it up, I smell that deep, rich, smoky Latakia. But that also kind of coupled with the Catch Bee Vinegary McClellan Virginia smell threw me off, <laughs> not going to lie. And But it tastes amazing, because I love McClellan Virginia's, and... I love me some lot of Kia. <laughs> all right, time for number one. I keep hitting the table. And the camera's going all freaking wonky. But <laughs> number one, and yeah, this is definitely my number one, is McClellan 40th Anniversary Flake. I love this tobacco. Um, I've already smoked through this whole tin, and it's a. Uh, Red and stowed Virginia mix. Not very much unlike their Christmas cheer, honestly. Um, but where Christmas cheer, at least to me, is just straight, is super tangy. It's still rich, but it's just super tangy and sweet. This is that, is that, but taken to a whole new level. It's this, the, 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 the Stowe Virginias give it this rich, deep, almost like caramely, caramelized sweetness to it. And it's, it's not something you can puff on like a freight train. Um, it's something you have to take slow. And which, that's why it surprised me. Normally if something, it, you know, it, normally if something doesn't, you know, stand up to my faster pace of smoking, then I just kind of cut it out. But no, this stuff is that good. It's so well worth slowing down to taste everything about this blend. And I have four tins in my cellar. I need to get more before, because it's a limited production run, and I need to get more before it's done, and before it's phased out, because this stuff is my favorite tobacco of this year. Probably one of my favorites I've ever had. Um, now given this year is where I did try most of everything I've <laughs> ever tried, because I've only been smoking a little over a year, but, yeah, I absolutely love it, get yourself some, and it, they, it does only come in the 100 gram tan, if you're weary about spending the, that money, hit me up, I'll send you some samples of it, now given it won't be as big as a sample as maybe the other stuff, because I might love it so much, but I'll send you at least, at least a few bowls worth, alright. Now, to recap. Number 10 is Haunted Book... Is, uh, Cornell and Deal's Haunted Bookshop. Number 9 is GLP's Quiet Nights. 8, uh, Seattle Pipe Club Plum Pudding. Number 7, Frog Morton Original. Uh, number 6, McBaron HH Vintage Serial. Number 5, yeah. Esoterica Stonehaven. Number 4... Esoterica and Soda Bed, 3, Pearson Irish Flake, 2, um, GOP's Gaslight, and number 1, 
McClellan 40th anniversary. Yeah, that uh, pretty much wraps up all my favorite blends of 2017. Pipe's pretty much done. Thank you all for tuning in. I'm at just here over 20 minutes now, which is the longest video I've made in a long time. So, uh, I'm going to cut it short here. And I will bid you all farewell. And I will see you when I make my next video. Um... I have a big announcement coming up. You guys should all probably know what it is, but uh, it'll probably be after the first of the year. So um, stay tuned, because I think you'll like it. I'm going to head to bed, clean this out. Not in, those, not in that order. <laughs> all right, I'm starting to ramble. I'm going to hop off. YouTube. You're beautiful. I love you. Take care.